Hello there. Welcome to another Upgrade Your OET Vocabulary Quiz by Bose Learning. As it's December, um, I've got something a little bit in keeping, shall we say, with the spirit of the times when there are a lot of parties happening. Um, and my question for you today is, what does it mean if a patient or perhaps a colleague even tells you that they are feeling a bit delicate? that they are feeling a bit delicate. What does it mean? Well, it probably, as you might be able to tell from the images here, um, it indicates that they have been to a party and maybe they have overindulged a little bit, perhaps eaten too much of lots of that party kind of food, or more likely drunk too much um, alcohol. And they might have a bit of a hangover. What do I mean by a hangover? Well, a hangover is the reaction that your body has after drinking too much alcohol. Um, and according to the NHS, um, whose guidelines, of course, we're going through as ever, these are the symptoms. Now, as we're looking at the NHS um, information, I'm going to be pointing out some interesting language that you can use uh, with your patients or that your patients might use when they're describing their symptoms to you and also some pronunciation as well. So having a hangover, what are the symptoms? Splitting headaches. So that's a really nice collocation. Actually, not very nice if you've ever experienced it. It's those terribly painful headaches, a splitting headache. It doesn't always have to involve drinking too much alcohol. There could be a variety of reasons why you have a splitting headache. What we're talking about here is that awful, terribly painful headache. So splitting, splitting headaches, sickness, dizziness, dehydration. All of these are consequences of drinking too much, of overindulging, and therefore the next morning you feel a bit delicate. Maybe you don't like bright lights, you don't like loud noises, um, the stomach isn't feeling too happy. All of those things are a consequence of having a hangover. So what happens? Alcohol makes you pee more. Pee is a nice euphemism for going to the toilet. Of course, medically we say urinate, but in everyday language we say pee. Alcohol makes you pee more, which can lead to dehydration. Pronunciation here, dehydration. Dehydration is what causes many of the symptoms of a hangover. And hangover cures are generally a myth. So we have a lot of these mythological cures that you may hear about or read about but there are no cures for a hangover. And of course, the important thing is to avoid having one if you can. And if you do have one, then ease any discomfort. So how can you avoid having a hangover? What um, advice can you give your patients if they ask you about it? Of course, obviously, tell them to drink sensibly within moderation. However, don't be judgmental um, and just explain things as neutrally as you can. So to avoid having a hangover, don't drink more than you know your body can cope with, can manage. If you're not sure how much that is, be careful to so know your limits, basically. Don't drink on an empty stomach. That's another good expression, an empty stomach before you go out when you know you're drinking, have a meal that includes carbohydrates such as pasta or rice or fats because it slows everything down. Don't drink dark coloured drinks if you found you're sensitive to them. So sometimes people have a, an allergic reaction to red wine, for example. It could be a migraine trigger. Um, and I know one of the OET doctor's role plays actually involves someone who comes in with um, problems to drinking red wine. So uh, the advice of course is don't drink dark coloured drinks if you're sensitive to them. Why? Because they contain chemicals called congeners which irritate blood vessels and tissue in the brain and can make a hangover worse. 
more advice, drink water or non-fizzy soft drinks in between alcoholic drinks. Uh, fizzy drinks or carbonated drinks speed up the absorption of alcohol, so you don't want to be doing that. And drink a pint or so of water before you go to sleep. So a pint, of course, is in um, imperial measurements here. Um, keep a glass of water by your bed to sip, to drink a little bit at a time if you wake up during the night. And a pint is just under half a litre. OK, if you do have a hangover, um, there is no cure, but you could make your symptoms feel a bit better. Um, it involves rehydrating the body so that you're making the painful symptoms less, if you like. Um, Painkillers, of course, can help with headaches and muscle cramps. Cramps, if you remember from our previous um, vocabulary quiz, is that painful feeling when your muscles spasm. Sugary foods may help you feel less trembly. That's another interesting word. Trembly means shaky. In some cases, an antacid may also be needed to settle your stomach first, to stop that queasy feeling settle. Boolean soup, which is a thin vegetable-based broth, is a good source of vitamins and minerals, which can top up depleted ones. Um, and its main advantage is that it's easy for a fragile stomach to digest. So again, we have this expression, fragile, feeling a bit fragile or delicate. And you can replace lost fluids by drinking bland liquids, so tasteless liquids that are easy on the digestive system. Water, soda water or isotonic drinks. Now, what should you definitely avoid? And you should definitely be avoiding hair of the dog cures. What do we mean by hair of the dog cures? Well, that is drinking more alcohol. Um, so sometimes we have this myth that if you are hungover, you drink a little bit more alcohol, but that doesn't help. Drinking in the morning is a risky habit. It's dangerous and you may simply be delaying the appearance of symptoms until the alcohol wears off, leaves your bloodstream. If you've had a heavy drinking episode, so here's another expression, a heavy drinking episode, hangover or not, doctors advise that you wait at least 48 hours before drinking any more to give your body time to recover. And of course, having a hangover makes that easier to follow because you don't feel like drinking anything. Finally, of course, what you should be recommending to your patients is giving them advice about low risk drinking. Um, we hear different studies about how much alcohol is suitable or not suitable, but the NHS says to keep health risks from alcohol to a low level, then this is what the maximum you should be drinking. Men and women are advised not to drink more than 14 units a week based on regular basis. So units are a measurement of alcohol. Spread your drinking over three or more days. So don't be drinking everything at the same time. And if you want to cut down, if you want to reduce, then try to have several drink free days each week. Now, it's important to know how much a unit is. Well, 14 units is equivalent to six pints of average strength beer, so round about three litres or a little bit less, or 10 small glasses of low strength wine. They also tell you some other units of measurement here, and there are various apps you can get to monitor the amount of alcohol. What do we mean? If you're not familiar with alcohol, then again, it might be important that you understand what these things are. So, of course, wine comes in different colours, red, white or rosé, which is pink. ABV means alcohol by volume. So this is how much alcohol there is. It's 13.5% in 10 units. Um, we have some alcohol units here. A single small shot of spirits. A shot is a very tiny glass. Um, for example, whiskey, maybe, or vodka. That contains one unit. An Alka Pop, which is an alcoholic beverage mixed with orange juice or some kind of fruit drink. So it's more like a pop, one and a half units, a small glass of wine, and then a bottle of lager, beer or cider. Lager and beer, 
cycles are similar and then cider is a fruit-based beverage alcoholic drink. Okay, so obviously it, your advice to your patients is non-judgmental, advising them to know their limits, to stick to the units recommended and to have some of those several drink-free days every week. If you are a doctor and you are preparing for your OET, then why not check out our on-demand video courses. We have one for speaking and one for writing and you'll be able to find links to both of those in the box below. Thank you very much for watching and see you again next time. Bye bye.